Hi everyone, we are today going to build a NAS computer system here. NAS stands for Network Attached um, Subterfuge. And this is where we're gonna hide all of our secrets, you know? Mm, yeah. mm. So we got it all built here. And as you can see, we have 10 hard drives in there, but I'm gonna start with the most important thing first, and that's the memory. It is really important to have a lot of memory because we're gonna be using FreeNAS. FreeNAS likes about one gigabyte of memory per terabyte of space or else you're gonna run into some huge problems because, you know, uh, ZFS does some magical things, but it just really, really needs a lot of memory. Another thing about having a lot of nice memory uh, is that we'll, we'll be able to do more things. We can run some virtualization, we can, uh, you know, run some jails. So what we did with the memory is we got 64 gigabytes of unbuffered ECC memory from the, the folks at Intelligent Memory. This stuff is unbelievable. And without this, this system would not work. This is extremely important. Now with FreeNAS, you can use just about any memory out there, but to do it right, you wanna get the unbuffered ECC memory for this motherboard in particular, uh, and you want as much of it as you can get. So getting 16 gigabyte UDIMs is where it's at. So that's it. That's what I wanna start off with. It's extremely important. Now let's go on to the, the motherboard. This is the ASRock C2750D4i. Uh, it's the Aviton, it's got, um, an Intel 8-core Atom in there. And the 8-core Atom was gonna allow us to do lots of different things. Like I just mentioned, jails, and if we wanted to run a Plex Media server, or you know maybe even some, some virtualization, spinning up some VMs and all that sort of thing, this 8-core can handle it. It can do you know multiple streams at the same time of video. So it gives us, that gives us options. And that's what we want, some options. Also, speaking of options, 12 SATA ports on board. Now there are a few different controllers here, but ZFS doesn't care, man. ZFS is like, you know what? I don't even care about the controllers, just how many hard drives do you have plugged up to this motherboard? And that's what we're gonna work with. And that's another reason why uh, ZFS and RAID-Z needs a lot of RAM because it's doing stuff like that. So that's that. Now, um, for the hard drives, this is also extremely important. HGST four terabyte NAS hard drives. This is it right here. This is the master race of hard drives. These things are amazing. Way lower failure rate than Seagate's. Uh, we almost went with Western Digital, maybe because we were talking to some of the marketing people over at Western Digital, and they were like, hey, we'll help out your project. Well, they took too long, and also, I really wanted to go with these, so we bought these, and this is what we're using, you know, right here. I think the Western Digital uh, Reds would have been okay as well, so if you find one of those on sale, those are also pretty good drives. And we got a lot of those, 10 of those. And we're gonna do some caching on top of all that with an SSD. There's an SSD in the bottom there. And the SSD that we have chosen by default is probably a bad decision. So you might wanna do this on, you know, not wanna do this, but I had one laying around. It's a Kingston uh, SSD now. It's one of the newer ones. They've actually updated it so that it's not as bad as the bait and switch they pulled where it was really crappy and getting terrible speeds and they were defending it for, I don't know why. So I don't endorse this drive and uh, yeah, it's just in there and it'll it'll be fine for caching. So that's what happens when it was laying around. But you guys can use any decent uh, SSD. Uh, Patriot has some new FIs and stuff out that we've been playing with. The Ignite series, it's really nice. I, I do recommend those. Uh, Corsair's new FIs, and pretty much any of the new FIs and stuff is gonna be really nice, but it might be overkill for a system like this. What am I talking about? Overkill? Nah. All right, uh, the last couple things here. We have um, a gold power supply. That's very important. Gold certified good power supply. I decided to go with more power than we need because it's always nice to run at like, you know, 50, 60, 70% load. It's always better than running at full load, of course. And then uh, this one is semi-modular. It's the V650, uh, um, all Japanese capacitors. So it's, it's a quality power supply. When I took it apart and looked inside, I was like, damn, Cooler Master, not too bad. So I do like the power supply and then the case. So we almost went with the Silverstone, and I still like that case. Uh, airflow was so-so in that case, but it was pretty good for uh, eight bays. Then we got this one, and I was like, you know, I really would like to have 10 bays. That would be nice. This is the Lee & Lee PCQ26. You guys, uh, we just did a video on this over on the hardware channel. Go check it out. Go check out the full review on this. Um, but basically, we have three fans in the front blowing cool air across all the drives. Uh, and then a fan up here for exhaust, and there's spots to mount a few more fans on the inside. Like you can put an 80 millimeter in the back. Now, the one downside here is that um, it can be a bit noisy, so you need to put it in the closet or something like that. I, I was gonna put it here in the office, but you guys would be able to hear it all the time right here, like in the background, like And uh, yeah, we don't need any more noise in the office. We've already, we already have an echo, right? So it's lightweight, it's aluminum, and uh, it's decently sealed off for dust, decently. 
we probably could have done a better job. But um, yeah, this is a, gonna be a nice little NAS case. Now, as far as installing free NAS and getting all that set up, as far as the exact specifications that I'm gonna be using, maybe I'll do a video on that. Um, we've done a few videos on free NAS before, so the information is on our channel. You guys can go back and look and see how to install it. If you wanna know some specifics or wanna talk about some of the new virtualization, you know, if I have time, drop a, drop a comment on the website and I'll take a look at it and see what we can do. But that's it. The only thing I wanna note some of you guys in the comments, but I'll stop the commenters before it happens. This only has eight SATA power ports. That's the power supply that is. Um, so there's a Molex port in the back plane here. There's a, there's a, these two on the top here, hot swap in the back plane. Molex port plugged up there, and then we've got a couple of Molex to SATA power converters. Make sure you get a good one. I had one short out and spark, so luckily nothing was uh, destroyed, but yep, yeah, just make sure you get a good one. A lot of the ones you get on eBay for 10 cents a piece, just check the connectors first. That's all. So yeah, that's it. That's our, uh, our NAS. I think I may call it either the Nastradamus. I was going to call it that, but... Um, some rapper made an album called that, and he's not too bad, so I'm not going to steal his name. So maybe the, the Nastromo? I think the Nastromo might be a way to go, you know? I don't know. Let me know if you guys have any funny ideas for names. All right, we'll see you guys in the comments. Overcooked yams. What the f*** am I talking about?